Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're doing Scarlet Fire, Cornell 77 today, to celebrate, to celebrate uh, reaching 100,000 subscribers here on YouTube. Uh, this whole thing started because I got into the dead, and you guys have been my most fervent or ardent supporters, whatever adjective you'd like to choose, and it has meant the entire world for me. So I can think of no better time to do another dead video. You guys know I'm doing Cornell 77 and this has been perhaps the most requested uh, track duo uh, in the history of this channel. I also want to say, to say thank you, I'm giving away this. This is my PRS SE Hollow Body 2. That was given to me by PRS, and now I'm going to give away to one of you who subscribe to this channel. If you haven't seen the video before this, I announce it, and there's a link there. I'll put it in this description. You just enter your email, and then I'm going to pick somebody randomly next Tuesday uh, during my weekly Tuesday live stream. And I'm going to pick it, and I'm just going to send this to you in the mail to say thank you. Um, this is... This is the least I can do, and you guys are the coolest people on the planet. And, um, dude, how lucky are we? This is so cool. So let's do it. This is Scarlet Begonias live at Barton Hall, Cornell University, Ithaca, New York, 5877, going in to fire on the mountain. Now, this is going to be a very long video, so I'm going to try to not start and stop as much as I typically would. I'm going to listen. Now... I'm going to point out the things that are significant from a guitar playing perspective. Um, I basically know the, uh, you know, what these songs are already. Um, but this is, uh, I've not listened to this Cornell 77 version, but I know these tunes. I've been saving this for this video. Um, so here we go. Let's get into it together. Grab your guitar. Try to listen to it like you've never heard it before, for those of you that have. Let's do it. So sad. I guess we All can't right, skip through the, the banter. Fun game. Move back. Now, when I tell you take a step back, everybody take a step back, right? Right. Okay, take a step back. And take another step back. And take yet another step back. And another. Take a step back. Or feel real guilty. Then all your friends up front won't be real bug eyed. <laughs> I know that feeling. Been a minute, but I know it. Come on with it. Come on. Set two. Let's do it. Oh. Digging it out.
All right. Okay. I'm gonna try to not start and stop too much. Phil, Phil, driving this train. You know, coming on with the, you know songs in B mixo, if you will. At least this part, right? So you got. I don't have a low B, but he's doing three Bs, like a low, mid, high. But that waiting towards the end with the slide, that... Oh, that is so killer. So killer. Um, God, the audio from this track is just so good. Basic, basic guitar parts you're hearing. You got... For, for the verse, you got B and E. This is basically a five chord to a one chord. B mixolydian. So key of E, but your your tonal center is B. So you got... That's the key. You got to get back to the B before the bar starts again. And then that's when you get the... That mixolydian lick. Root. Slide into your major third from your minor third, five, major sixth, flat seven. That's it. You can do it in any position, but that's basically what it is. Then for the chorus part, you got A. So now it's a four chord focus for the chorus. Very cool to keep your same um, mixolydian theme but have the focus go from the five chord to the four chord never the one love it right so four so four one five four one four one five four one back to the five and b so killer here we go That part is so cool. That, that, that. Like on the piano, you hear that arpeggiating of the triads, just doing your closest voice leading with those three chords. It sounds beautiful. Had one of those flashes, I'd been best bridges of all time any tune I've ever heard so you're in B mixo but then for a moment just for the bridge B major right you come in with an F sharp and never been wrong but I never been right never been right never been wrong everything turns out the way it does in this song and F sharp's a stone cold five chord right I know this was five all day that is that is a five chord so right and then right back, right back to B mixolydian. It is just a five chord for a moment. All you're trying to do is get this leading tone, right? That A sharp to B, right? That major third of F sharp to lead back up, right? So if your voice leading a high part, it might behoove you to actually go up while the rest of the band goes down. Just talk about it to each other just to have a conversation, you know? But you got five, and then B, A, B. So now it resolves back to your tonic center, which E major. So it's basically like 
Five of five, if you will. Five, four, one. If you're real slick, you can throw down a third and voice lead down in the bass. I'm sure Phil does it every now and again. He does everything. He's running this tune. Um, but then it does this lick for each of the chords going up. E. Basically a blues thing. Root. Minor third to third. Fifth. Major sixth, root. Then goes up to F sharp again. Right? A. B. And then. Uh, oh, sorry. Like, it's just that walk down. But it's the same move. One. Squeeze through your minor third to your major third, five, six, one for each one of those. E, F sharp, A, and B. And then it's back into the verse. I mean, if they ain't one of the best bridges of all time, I don't, I've never heard a good bridge. <laughs> and by the way, how great does Bobby's chimey parts, how great do they sound? I always forget to mention what I'm hearing because there's just so much going on. But, you know, that, that whatever he's doing in there. But listen to how syncopated it is and how different the, the actual timbre of the guitars are. Like, the guitars sound very different. Just like the bass is huge and the keys are so clean. You hear everything and it's all, it's all rhythmically occupying its own space harmonically occupying its own space, but also tonally, the actual sound of the instruments. Just listen to how good everything sounds. There's nothing wrong with the look that's in her eye. Had to learn the hard way to let a play slide, let a play slide. The bass. Jerry's so on here. I mean, you hear him spelling out all the different chord tones. It's not just B Mixolydian. It just, it's just not, but you can start there. Um, but the, he's singing. He's just gliding through those thirds. Like, he's just effortlessly singing through them. It just sounds great in this recording. <laughs> That, 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 that. Like all those little, all those little, it's third hunting. It's third hunting. It's, 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 I want you to try to listen with your ear, even if you're not a guitar player, to the note that you can tell changes something. That, that, I call it chord function, um, you know, but like, there's always one note, you know, that you can tell is like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Those are thirds. Those are the thirds, right? And he's, he's just, he's a master third hunter. And that's how great melodies, um, that's how, what, that's what great melodic playing is. The third creates the function of the chords most of the time, more than any other note. And he's, 
He is tracking them intuitively. to it. They're just, they're, they're waiting. They're all waiting to go together. Now, I don't know exactly if I remember this riff, but I remember it being just, you know, little little parts of, uh, of B7. So like, wait. Third, fifth, root, flat seven, right? That is B7. Then you're going over to uh, like E, but you can think of it like four in pattern, but it's really one. So, um, yeah, it goes root, major third, major sixth. Now I'm talking relative to this key center. Fifth, and then it goes... Something just like that. But basically you're saying something about B7, then you're saying something about E, but you're stopping at the six, you're not actually touching the seven. And then you say it about B again on the higher uh, octave, and then you walk back down. And it's got that merengue feel. I don't even know if that's the right term, but it's the word that came to the brain.
hear that? There was something crazy in there. There was something crazy in there. Everybody's waiting for that uh, that A to come in, that because that's where we're going with Fire on the Mountain, right? And you just heard it. That was the first introduction. You know what? Let's go back. They do it, and around the fourth time the crowd figures it out. Listen to this. So we're just on B right now, wait for it. That was the first time. You heard one whistle. I know this is little stuff, but this is awesome. Check it out. Let's go back a little more. Hear the whistle? Crowd figures it out. Love it. So, you, 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 got, you got to think about what you're listening to. They know they're going to the next song, which is B and A, right? It's, it's, it's. Right? They know that's what's coming. Um, someone has to introduce it. Comes in on the keys at first. But then it's still waiting for everybody. And they must do this in phases. And I know it's intuitive. It's not like the most planned out thing. But you hear Jerry right there finally switch to that auto wah tone, which is, um, you know what you need for that song, right? So it's like step by step by step. They're all kind of taking their turns. They're probably looking at each other. They've done it a million times. And they're going to jump together. But it's like there's an introduction, but there's not a commitment yet. You know, you got to get, you got to get, Everything's got to build in one step at a time. I just, I, I love this. Here we go.
switched on time. Let me check my camera real quick. All right, so now we're in Fire on the Mountain. Committing now, we're committing, we're getting, we're getting close. Bill, man, he let him know it's time. Iconic little lines. It, it adds so much. I don't even remember it exactly, but it's like So if you guys, so the first time when it's over B, it's just B and A7 the whole time. Those little pushes are so important, but then. That, those little lines right there, when you go to this two, what that really is again, third of your A, that's C sharp. Third hunting creates the sound of your five chord, which a flat seven does in a minor tonality, but it, forget all that. It's the third of the A, it's C sharp. We're third hunting, that's, that's usually what it turns out to be. Let's keep going. Fifth, 
This is what I love about Jerry Garcia. He reminds me a lot of Miles Davis. And I know you're going to say, what in God's name are you talking about? I always felt when I heard Miles Davis, because I never really got into jazz, except I love Kind of Blue. That record's great. The reason why I love Kind of Blue is because I always felt, here's the music, right? And that can be anything. It's the whole arrangement. It's the whole deal. And then when it's time to sing or take a solo, you're trying to find the thing that sits way up top and connects everything below. It's like a searing beacon, you know, where every little note, every little phrase makes everything underneath of it make sense. Jerry does that with his singing and his guitars in the same way I heard Miles do that. Like, it's so easy to play guitar-centric things or horn parts or these things that you come up with. It is a far different story to have the mindset, the attitude, as Miles would call it, you know, to say, you were given this canvas. It's whatever this is, and that's different night for night. Your job is to play something different each time about what this is, and you're up here. Yeah, you can be in here when you're with the band, when you're doing rhythm section parts, when you're grooving, right? But when it's your turn to sing or take a lead, you don't want to be in here. You want to be in the stratosphere, you know? The way he comes in with the vocals after that long buildup, I mean, it literally is like the sky's parting, you know? And then when you hear him come in with the lead, I can't wait to get to this one. Every time I hear it, I just think of, man, that's some Miles Davis type stuff because it's, 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 it's a commitment to way up here connecting everything way down below. It's not, I mean, it is, it is um, a bad way to explain it. But let me know in the comments if you know what I'm talking about. That's how I feel when I hear it. It's just like, okay, we got the groove, we got everything. And then once he comes in, whether it's singing or playing, it's just like, you're up in the clouds again. You're just, you're, you're above everything and it's all in support of that. Almost like it was scripted that way. But yet, what's up top is what's being improvised. Um, most notably, where the bottom, the structure, you know, is, is um, far more predictable for the musicians in the band. They basically know what they're doing B to A, right? It, that, it, but, but the opposite is the feeling, that, that the structure was built to support this, but this is what's being made up truly deeply on the spot. He and Miles Davis are the ones that come to mind most when I, when, in that feeling that I get from when they say something.
yes. I wish he did it twice, but it's almost better that it's just the once. He's got that effect on it, the octave thing or whatever, but the... Oh, it's just, it's just so good. How much is Phil just fighting back there? You hear him like stand out and then... I mean, he is, he, he's punching the rhythm forward. I can't say enough about it. Like, the, the rhythm section, the, this, this, there's so many magical things that's happening in here, like in this concert, <laughs> but, but the biggest, the biggest, the, the biggest thing that stands out for me is that this is, this is, this is the Phil show. I, I know, I know the sum is, is, is greater than all the parts. And it's, and it's like, it's like a giant airplane. It's slow to get off the ground and it's real heavy, but once it gets up there, it just sears and there's nothing like it. I get you, but Phil is driving this mother, driving it. Um, let's keep going.
One second. One second. All right, we're good. We're still recording. <laughs> you never know. You never know. All right. So this 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 tune in particular is a masterclass in what you can do with two chords, a five and a four chord, mixolydian. I could have started and stopped that video dozens, dozens of times, uh, hundreds of times. I mean, the whole, the whole, um, the whole band is constantly moving around their inversions and their triads. This, this is how you get really good at your instrument. Reducing your options and figuring out where they are everywhere. So you got B. Sorry, you got. You don't be here. right? You're hearing everybody take turns doing high parts, low parts, middle parts, right? You're hearing inversions, so roots in the bass, thirds in the bass, fifths in the bass, all over the place. They are um, exhausting the B to A options. It's everywhere. And you hear the same thing in the melody, right? And the solo taking. The melody is root to root, it starts, you know. B to A. And then you hear the harmonies come in where you start to do thirds, right? Then fifths, right? And that's how I would implore you to practice taking leads over that. Start with that perspective of trying to sear high across with chord tones like Jerry. Let it ring and then try to go back and try to figure out how he connects it chromatically and all the different parts that you hear. I made a whole lesson about this. Um, I'll see if I can find it and put the link in the description, but it's called Soloing Over Fire on the Mountain, right? But basically, you have two chords but finding your closest move on each string set. So you're always going B to A. So B to A roots, B to A thirds, B to A fifths. So that's how you hear them cascade up, even though the chord you would think goes down, B, A, B, A. But you can go B, A, B, A, B, A, B, A, right? Because you're just, you're connecting your closest chord tone moves. That's how melodies are made. So this is a masterclass in that. Aside that, aside from that, all I want to say is that Phil is the standout star. I know everybody's a star, but Phil, you had me right here. You've had me right here the entire time on this record, but especially in Scarlet Begonias, the first that... If there's a song I have to choose to turn a fan on to Grateful Dead, that might be one of them. Just play it the first groove when they jump into Scarlet Begonias. Amazing. Amazing. Guys, thank you so much. Thanks for all your support along the way. Thanks for helping me get to 100,000 subscribers. Thanks for liking, subscribing, dropping links in the comments. And especially for those of you that spend the 10 bucks a month and support me over at guitargate.com getting all my lessons and courses and learning from me. That's how I make a living. That's the best way to support the channel. And I'm so incredibly thankful. And again, say thank you for hitting 100 grand. I'm giving this guitar away two Tuesdays from now. This is mine. You will get this exact one. I will send it to you in the mail. Click the link in the description. Put your name on the mailing list and I will pick someone randomly next Tuesday. I hope to see you there. Have a great rest of the day and uh, more Cornell 77 in the chamber. Cheers.